brief introduction here. All right, this material is not on this test. It's next test, okay? But there's a lot of it. So we're just going to kind of review some of the stuff that we've already talked about before um, in which we, when we're talking about the immune cells, all right? This is chapter 22. Yep. So we saw this before, all right, when we talked about the different types of cells that are located in the blood are leukocytes, also known as our white blood cells, all right? All these cells are made in the red bone marrow, okay? So the different classifications, we have granulocytes, monocytes, and lymphocytes. So now this time, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about what they do, right? We talked briefly about each one, but now we're really, especially with the lymphocytes, all right, we're going to talk about their involvement in acquired immunity, okay, and their roles in some of the innate immunity too, all right? So remember, the granulocytes, those are the cells that had the little granules inside. When we stain them, we see these little dots all throughout, right? And those granules are going to help them with their immune function. Because a lot of the times, those granules play a role in, in, their, uh, in enzymatic reactions and whatnot. Or they're actually these chemicals that kill things, okay? The monocytes are what we call the macrophages when they're circulating in the blood. So when they're in the blood, they're a, ma they're a monocyte. When they move from the blood into tissue, that's when we call them a macrophage, okay? And then finally, we got our, our lymphocytes. You've heard of B cells and T cells? Well, that's what these guys are, all right? You've got B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and then these cool guys. I think they're so cool, they gave them a cool name called natural killer cells. That's what they do. They go around, either they're going around killing things or they're telling macrophages, hey, dummy, go over there and kill that cell. And that's what it does. I feel like the macrophage is like the... The, 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 the cell that gets pushed around a lot, just told what to do. But it's the heavy lifting cell. If you've ever seen a Goonies, it's like a, a sloth, all right? Or if you've ever read the book of Mice and Men, it's like Lenny. Just go over there and take care of business, all right? That's the macrophage, okay? So when we get into this, all right, a couple things, first of all. This is really an important, I mean, not important. It is important because I'm saying it, but it's just interesting that most of your white blood cells aren't in your blood, okay? They're in the tissues, okay? So that's kind of important. So when you get your blood drawn and they look and they're like, oh, your, your white blood cell uh, count is elevated, all right? Well, if it's elevated in your blood, who's to say what's going on in your tissues, all right? And vice versa. So that's important. We're going to discuss, all right, some of the structures that are going to house these leukocytes, all right? So when we talk about secondary lymphatic structures, all right? We include lymph nodes, spleen, tonsils, malt, that's the mucosal associated lymphatic tissue, usually associated with um, uh, uh, digestive system, all right? We'll talk about that. And then some of the lymphatic nodules, okay? So as we move through this, this chapter here, we're gonna talk about all right, yes, the role of these cells in the immune function, but we need to tell you where they live, all right? Where are they? We briefly were exposed to some of these immune cells when we did the skin in chapter six. Remember the dendritic cells and the, the cells of Langerhans, and there were these cells that just lived in the epidermis, and their job was to monitor, all right, the, the neighboring cells for any type of abnormalities, or if you were to cut your skin, all right, and you've got some sort of pathogen that invaded into the epidermis, these cells could initiate the immune response. So we're going to talk about them, okay? A lot of these cells are going to, are, 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 these tissues are going to involve macrophages, okay? When we talked about connective tissue way back when, all right, in chapter five, we talked about the different cells that resided in connective tissue. So you had resident cells and wandering cells. An example of the resident cell was the macrophage. We called it the fixed macrophage. And it lived within certain tissues. It wouldn't travel anywhere. It was stuck in that tissue. And that's fine with that macrophage because it's happy there. All right, you have them in your lungs. Think about it. All the garbage that you breathe in, especially if you live in the city, right? if you breathe in something, these macrophages, if it's a pollutant, they'll uh, destroy it for you, which is good because otherwise your lungs would look like garbage. All right? So a lot of these cells are going to be permanent residents, okay? But when we talk about the wandering versions, 
All right, those are the cells that come and go. They can migrate into the tissue, they can leave the tissue. All right, so this is where we're coming from, but when we're dealing with macrophages, they're either permanent residents in these organs, i.e. the tissue, the lungs, all right, or they're gonna come and go. All right, so the big structure, obviously the largest organ in your body is your skin, okay? So when we talk about the epithelial layers of the skin, we're talking about the epidermis, all right? And then the mucosal membranes. Well, these two structures right there, right there, your skin, your epidermis, and the mucosal membranes pretty much covers your entire body, okay? Because mucosal membranes are going to be found in areas that are entrances into your body and exits of your body, okay? So we've had to set up defenses, so in case you breathe something in, someone coughs in your face, all right, and you breathe that in, all right, hopefully, all right, they aren't carrying any type of pathogen that it's going to get stuck in the mucosal membranes of your mouth and your nose, hopefully, all right, so it doesn't actually enter into uh, some of the more sensitive areas of your body. So when we talk about the, these uh, uh, cells, we talk about the dendritic cells. Remember the Langerhan cells? I just mentioned them, okay? And so these cells came from monocytes, but they've taken residence up into these tissues here, all right? So what they do is if they come across a pathogen, and a pathogen is a foreign substance. It can be, part, it can be a foreign protein. It can be a foreign invader like a virus, a parasite, fungus, uh, bacteria, okay? So pathogen is bad. We don't like pathogens. So they'll engulf the pathogen like... That too. Oh, I'm so sorry, y'all. That should not have been on. Do you want me to take this? It's someone from the FDA? Just kidding. Um, so what we're seeing here, all right, these, these dendritic cells will engage these pathogens through the process of phagocytosis. They pretty much will gobble it up like a Pac-Man. And then if they can uh, uh, move around, all right, then they will actually enter into the lymphatic system and then try to take that pathogen or the parts of that pathogen and show it to another cell. All right, so we call dendritic cells APCs, which means antigen presenting cell. We'll talk about that soon. All right, you don't have to worry about that yet. So they're like that kid that finds, you know, something outside. And, it, and that kid comes to the mom or the dad and be like, look what I found. That's what these cells do. All right, so they're going to find the pathogen. They're going to eat it. They're going to hopefully destroy it. But in that process, has anyone here ever seen, uh, oh, man, it's a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, the, uh, uh, something soldier, Universal Soldier. It's a horrible movie from the 80s. Anyways, one of the characters in it, played by the actor Dolph Lundgren, he was the soldier, and he used to go around. If he killed somebody, he would cut off their ear, and he'd put it on a necklace. And that's what I think of the dendritic cells. They kill something, and then they just take the, the parts of that something, and they put it all over themselves. And that's what they do. So they've killed this pathogen, virus, bacteria, whatever. They, they destroyed it, and they just stick it all over its body. And then it's going to wander around to these other cells, which we'll talk about in the immune system, and say, Will you look at this? Should this be here? Okay. And that's what they do. Okay. So when we talk about the um, immune cells in the connective tissue, we're going to be talking about mast cells. These guys are huge. Mast cells, okay, they live in tissue. They don't live in the bloodstream. We got another cell that does pretty much the same thing as the mast cell. All right. But we're going to talk about that in a second. It's one of our granule sites. All right. If you remember it, cool. If not, Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay? So think of the mast cells. These are the ones that you and I complain about all the time. When our nose is running, our eyes are watery, all right? Allergies. Allergies. Everyone complains about allergies now. Okay? It's because the mast cells have histamine and heparin. All right? When they release those chemicals, it causes, well, runny noses. It makes things leaky. And we'll talk about its, its purpose. But we're going to see these mast cells. All right, in the dermis, that's the layer obviously below our epidermis, also found in our mucosa, which is awesome. 
throughout the respiratory, the GI, and the urogenital tract. So again, these mucosal membranes are found near the entrances and exits of our body. That's huge, okay, huge. All right, so this picture here is just depicting, all right, here are our leukocytes in circulation, and then he, these are some of the other locations to which you will find some of these leukocytes. If I zoom in here, you can see, all right, this example here is showing you and some of the lymphatic structures. All right, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about that in lab today. You can see the, the macrophage here taking residence up in the lungs here. So it's a permanent resident, it stays there. All right, here's our dendritic cell that we saw in, in 210, all right, that's living in the epidermis, um, specifically in the stratum spinosum. Okay, and then you can see our mast cells here, which are living in this loose connective tissue, which is located all throughout the body. All right, well, we can't talk about the immune system and not talk about chemicals. This is hugely important that you are familiar, that you familiarize yourself with the term cytokine. All right, and yes, they're proteins, but they're chemicals. And they're gonna help to regulate our immune activity, either increase it or decrease it, depending on what's happening, okay? So we'll talk more about this, but the innate and the adaptive immune system are the two parts to your immune system. Together, they make up the immune system as a whole. But there's cells that are involved in, in, in the innate and there's cells that are involved in the adaptive immune system. And they're going to release these cytokines, these, these protein chemical messengers, which are going to affect certain reactions. All right? It'll influence maybe other tissues or other cells, all right, to do something. We saw this before, like in the endocrine system. Okay, you have a gland that releases a hormone, and that hormone goes into circulation, and it finds a target cell, and then it causes that target cell to do something or to stop doing something. All right, it affects the outcome of that target cell. Well, that's what these guys do. All right, so you'll have one cell, all right, that's going to release a chemical messenger, a cytokine, that's going to find the target cell and bind to its receptor there and get that target cell to actually maybe activate or deactivate, to do something, all right? So when a cell releases it on itself, we call that an autocrine. When it releases it on one of its neighbors, like its next door neighbors that has four barking dogs, all right, then it's called a paracrine. And then we saw in chapter 17, when it releases its chemical messenger into the bloodstream, we call that endocrine. Okay, so autocrine on itself, paracrine on a close neighbor, all right, and then endocrine somewhere in the body that utilizes its the circulatory system with the blood, okay? All of these cytokines have a short half-life, which is good, all right, because eventually we want this to stop. There's an immune reaction going on, okay, for some sort of infection or condition, all right, when that's over, when we ended that, we want this to shut down. We don't want these cells to keep doing what they're doing, okay? So they have a nice short half-life. So again, their job is to cause signaling, all right? And in some, like I said, it will cause in some cells for them to actually engage in whatever their immune function is, all right? It can actually cause the maturation, all right, of T cells, which we'll talk about later on, all right? Because when a cell gets made, Remember, it's immature, right? You can't expect your two-week-old child to get a job. It needs to grow up right away, all right? It can't just start doing stuff yet, so it's got to grow and mature, all right? That's what we need to do with our cells, all right? The same thing, so these cytokines will help with that. The inflammatory response is huge, all right? In dealing with functions of healing, all right? Believe it or not, inflammation is good. Too much of it is bad, and too much of it for too long of a time is bad, right? There's a time and a place for inflammation, but once it's over, it's got to go, right? We can't have it going on because then we can start to have larger issues later on, okay? And of course, we want it to destroy cells, especially if we're invaded by a lot of bad cells, okay? These pathogens, you know what viruses like to do? They like to get into the cell, and then they tell the cell, hey, you know what? You're working for me now. You're going to make more of me. 
and then I'm going to explode you and I'm going to go and spread out and find more cells like you and make more of me. All right, that's what's going to happen. So we, before that happens, wouldn't it be nice if we had some cytokines that were like, hey, man, we got to kill that cell over there. So they go in there and they kill that cell that's infected. Boom. Then it doesn't, then it doesn't make more of the virus particles. And we'll get into that. Aren't you excited? There's so much stuff out there. We're going to go in this and blow your mind. I love immunology. Love it, love it. Okay, so let's talk about the two different types of, of, uh, of immunity, okay? You have the immunity that you're born with, that's innate, and then you have the immunity that you acquire as you live, that's adaptive, okay? So there's some differences between the two forms, okay? One it involves different cells, not completely. Some cells are involved in both, okay? But the cells involved play, uh, are going to be different. We're definitely going to have the type of response is going to be specific for that type of immunity, okay? It's not going to be the same response for both innate or for adaptive immunity, okay? How they work is different, and specifically the amount of time, all right? Adaptive takes a while. Innate is immediate, right away, like your skin. Keeps out, there's tons, you've got trillions of bacteria living on your skin right now. Don't want to freak you out. But it's true. It's true. All right? But your skin has defenses for that. Okay? So it's what we call an opportunistic organism. There's going to be certain organisms that if they can get into your body, you know, that's when they start to really become a problem for you. But as long as they're outside on your skin, they can't get in, it's not so much a problem. Okay? So we're going to see, even though these are two different, all right, immune systems here, not immune systems, but parts of the immune system, they both have a common good, a common mission, all right? Immunity, protect the body, defend the body. That's its job, okay? All right, so what is innate, all right? That's what you're born with, okay? As soon as you're born, bang. Innate immune system is there, all right? It's nonspecific, like your skin, it keeps everything out. It keeps water out, water's good, but it doesn't matter, okay? It's gonna keep it out, okay? Gonna keep out the bacteria too, okay? So it's non-specific. So it doesn't. So I don't need to be exposed to something, you know, to actually get an immune response out of it. The adaptive, you know, it's like chicken pox. If you've ever had it naturally, the first time you have it, you have it for a couple of weeks, then it goes away. You're exposed to it, you know, again. Right? But since you already have that immunity, you don't need to have. You don't have to have a second exposure. Well, you have a second exposure to it, but you can amount a, a much better or quicker immune response. With an A, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times you're exposed to it. It's going to be the same response, okay? So, skin, mucosal membranes, all right? You are also going to have non-specific cellular responses, all right? And then we'll get into the molecular internal defenses in a bit, okay? So, think of an immediate response that is non-specific that you're born with, Okay? That's what I like to think of with the innate. All right, adaptive, all right, is acquired. So this is the one in which you're exposed to something and now you have to build up a, de a defense to it. This is what we're hearing all the time about uh, the flu, a cold, coronavirus, right? That's what a vaccine is helping you with, with your adaptive immunis uh, immunity, all right? So it involves an antigen. Does anyone know what an antigen is? It's for a foreign protein, foreign protein, okay? Let's, let's make it even simpler than that. It's a foreign substance. It's not part of you, okay? It shows a different molecular makeup than anything that you have in your body, okay? It's a foreign substance. So you have this foreign substance, and then we're going to react to that foreign substance using our T and B lymphocytes, okay? But here's the thing. Their response is particular, all right? It is specific, okay? So they can only respond to one specific type of antigen, all right? It's not nonspecific, it's specific. That's, this takes several days. It takes a little bit of time, okay? So think innate, I, immediate, nonspecific, okay? Adaptive takes a little bit of time, but it's only specific 
to one type of antigen, okay? All right, I would say review this uh, figure 22.2. All right, this basically kind of spells out some of the players involved. I'll quickly go over this. Here's your innate immune system here. All right, involving the skin and muc mucosal membranes. We talked about some of those, like the dendritic cells, the macrophages in the skin. All right, some of the natural killer cells, we'll get into that in a moment. All right, so for our nonspecific internal defenses, all right, well, actually, let me just jump into it. I feel like a waste of time. All right. What time is it? Oh, no. Let's stop. I was just about to give this a good breaking point. Let's, just, let's break here. And uh, let's take about a 15-minute break, okay? And then we'll come in and we'll knock out some of the lymphatic system. Then we'll get you all, we'll get you all out of here, okay? So, yeah, let's take a break.